Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the 16th episode of the Scaling Rails screencast series, sponsored by New Relic. This is part two of two episodes where we're going over load testing. So if you haven't seen part one, it's time to go back and watch it. In part one, we learned what load testing is, how to use Apache Bench and HTT Perf. In this episode, we're going to figure out how to use HTT Perf with sessions, followed by a little bit on auto bench, which allows us to automate our HTT perf load tests. Then we'll figure out how to visualize the results we get out of auto bench. And finally, we'll be taking a look at a couple other load testing tools we might want to be familiar with. Up until now, all the commands that we've been running haven't dealt with sessions at all, including the ones for Apache bench. What this means is when we're running these commands against our server, if we create 1200 requests, it might be creating 1200 sessions which isn't so good and may lead to bad results. Why is that? Well, it's for two reasons. First of all, if you looked on your production website for 1,200 people hitting your server like in the same minute, many of those are going to be um, the same user, the same session, right? It's not gonna be 1,200 new people. So that might make your results a little inaccurate. Also, creating a session might be slower than updating the session. You know, if you're using Rails, that can be true. So. Basically, doing this and creating a new session every time might be fine if your action isn't using the session. Um, and actually, in Rails 2.3, um, all of your actions don't use the session unless you explicitly access it. This was not the case before Rails 2.3. Before Rails 2.3, if you didn't want an action to use a session, you had to explicitly set it. So if you're load testing a particular action that is setting something in the session, you need to be a little bit careful and you might want to use one of the commands I'm about to show you. The first HTT perf option that uses sessions to load test is the with sessions option or WSESS. -S. So what we're saying here is create 10 sessions. Each is going to start one second after the next. That's the rate. And each of these sessions should hit the URL five times every two seconds. So you can kind of see where those numbers line up. Now, if you do the math, what we're going to be doing here is 10 sessions, each hitting the server five times for a total of 50 requests. The second way we can load test with sessions with HTT perf is using the with sessions log option. So what this is going to do is it's going to create 10 sessions for the server. Each begins one second after the next, and each calls the URLs in the path.txt file every two seconds. What does that file look like? Well, it could be something like this. So here we're going to the login. We're actually logging in using these credentials, going to the new post page, and creating a new post. So each of our sessions is going to do each of those. And so that's four URLs, so it's going to be a total of 40 requests. So now that you're familiar with HTT perf, I'm going to show you a few shortcuts and show you how to generate some graphs to help visualize your optimal load. In the previous section, we saw the process that you need to go through to use HTT perf to see how much load your server can handle. You know, going through and adding to the rate and adding to the number of connections until you max it out and get a response time that is acceptable. Now this sort of uh, load balancing and figuring out what this right average is, you know, is a little cumbersome and it'd be great if there was a way to do this in an automated fashion. Well, there is and it's called AutoBench. You can download the source for AutoBench by going to this URL you see here. You can also install it using Mac ports and in order to run it, you might have a command that looks something like this. Now we're going to go through some of these options so it'll make a little bit more sense. So what this auto bench command is saying is run a series of HTTP perf tests. Each is going to do its own set of 700 requests to the server. The first one is going to have 50 requests per second. That's the low rate. Each additional test is going to have 10 more requests per second until we reach the high rate of 120 requests per second. Um, each of these requests is only going to have one request per connection. Um, the timeout is going to be five, and the output of this command should go to results.tsv. It's basically tab delimited. Here is the results that we might see when we run this command. It's obviously a little cryptic. I'm going to narrow it down to four columns. The first column here is showing us 
the request rates for each of the HTTP perf performance tests that were run. The second is showing us the average response rate. Right? So you can see here, um, we ran 50 requests, we got 50 responses back. We ran 60 requests, we got 60 responses back. 70 requests, 64.6 responses back on average. Okay. Um, then we have our standard deviation. Again, you need to keep an eye on this. If it gets really big, then something's fishy. And lastly, we have the average response time. So as you can see, as soon as we jumped up to 70 requests per second, the response time jumped up to 1.4 seconds. Not so good. Now that we have all this great data, let's figure out how to visualize it and graph it. Well, it turns out that AutoBench comes with a command called bench to graph which will graph all of your results, but it requires GNU plot, which I tried installing using Mac ports and it went to installed a ton of extra libraries. And when it went to install GNU plot, it bugged out, wasn't able to use it. So what I decided to do is sort of write my own grapher, make it a little simpler, less dependencies. And all it does is requires the scruffy gem. You can get the source down here at this gist. All I have to do is run Ruby Autobench Grapher to RB and then send in the tab delivery result. And it gives me some very pretty graphs, which I'm going to show you now. So here's our first graph, which is average reply rate. And in the blue and along the bottom, you can see the average request per second. So we started out with 50 and then we incremented by 10 from there. So 60, 70, 80. And in the yellow, you can see the average responses per second. And it was able to keep up at 50 and 60 requests per second, but as soon as we got to 70, it started to drop off and then eventually level out. The second graph that we create is average response time. So as you can see, with 50 and 60 requests per second, their response time was good, but as soon as we got to 70, 80, 90, and 100, it looks like it averaged just under 1.5 seconds per request which, you know, isn't too bad. Our system, you know, didn't go down, it didn't die. It was still getting responses back to the client. So maybe that's not too horrible, depending on, you know, how fast you optimally want to get responses back to your clients. In this last graph, you can see the number of errors that popped up per test. So it was kept at zero for 50 and 60 requests per second, um, only a few for 70, but then 80 got more and 90 and 100 and 110 got exponentially larger. So we need to uh, be careful that our server doesn't reach that throughput and we start throwing errors to our users. Now we're going to take a quick look at a few other tools that allow us to do load testing. The first, which is really new, which was created by James Golick pretty recently, is called Trample. It's a Ruby gem. And in order to run it, it looks something like this. So we've got Trample Configure, Concurrency 20, so 20 requests at the same time, Iterations 10. Um, we can actually specify do a login. So if you read this, you can see that we're logging in as a random user. Interesting. So this is really simulating what our production environment might look like. Then we're going to get a random post. And uh, what's interesting here, and why the simulation is better than hitting the same URL over and over again, is that odds are, if you've employed any sort of caching, the first time maybe you hit a post, it might get totally cached. And then, you know, all the rest of the 600 requests that you're benchmarking with um, might just hit up the cached request, and then your benchmarks aren't very useful. Whereas like this, we're going to be hitting any of the thousands of post pages, which might not be cached. So this might be a much more accurate way to do load testing. Then here at the bottom, we're going to create a post. Okay, so this is kind of simulating the load a little more accurately than hitting the same URL over and over again. But it really depends on what you're testing. If you really want to test a you know single action to get it as fast as possible, then it, I'm sure it's fine to test that same URL over a heavy load. The next load testing application that's worth mentioning is Apache JMeter. And this is a visual application and which gives you a lot of the same sort of data that we've already seen. Um, but what this means, because it's a graphical client, is that if you want to run it on a remote server, you need to run it in a distributed way so that your load tests are you know, running on a server that's close to your web server. A few other tools that I found out there for load testing include Siege, the Grinder, Sung, which is actually an Erlang tool that's newer than I think the others. 
then you have OpenSTA. So, you know, these are worth taking a look at. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of this two-part episode on load testing. But before we go, I want to leave you with an example of how you might use this in production today. So let's say you've got a production app and you're running New Relic RPM to do performance monitoring. What we might do is log into New Relic RPM and use that to figure out where our slowest action is. Then we might go into our local server and run some load tests against that specific action and record those results. We then might use some of the techniques we've learned in these screencasts to optimize that action and see how quick we can get it. Then we might run those load tests again against that action and compare our results to the old results that we did you know, through our load test, see how much faster we got it. If it wasn't fast enough, well, we go and optimize some more. Once we're done, we deploy in production. Then maybe a week later, we look back in New Relic RPM to see how much it's improved. Okay, so we can get some statistics on that over a week of time using real production data. Then we might find the next action that's slowest and repeat from there. Thanks for watching this screencast. Hope you found it useful. And see you later.